streaming. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here in the house. I'm going to start off with all you guys' comments here for all you people that were just waiting. Uh, so, hello, Derek. Tell us what's really going on with the Honda City Turbo. I actually have a video of that that I posted recently. Um, it's like uh, the title of it is like clean, time to clean up. Uh, your boy is here. What's up, Swerpy Drift? Um, where's the pre-show Mario Kart? Lol. We're actually debating whether or not we want to do something like that in the future or not. We have the stuff. Obviously, we have the stuff to do it. Um, I'm still unsure how I want to do that. I kind of want to do streaming in a couple of different time zones because, you know, we got customers from all around the world. And as it is right now, this one's kind of tailored toward people that are in the, uh, in the USA and Canada and, you know, I guess any other time zone there. And uh, we're thinking about doing one that's kind of a Euro-centric time zone as well. So, I don't know. I guess the people in the chat here would not really care about that too much. But uh, one of my ideas was to do kind of a more casual sit-down chat type thing where instead of doing all of the auction picks like we do in this video here, we're going to do like a uh, just like relax and play video games kind of thing. But I'm not sure if that hits our, our target audience. I don't know if we're going to get people saying, these guys just want to lie around and play video games all day. They're not that serious about actually exporting. Hey Derek, finally, uh, glad to finally be on time for one of these from Kevin Machida. Hi Kevin, how you doing? Good to know that uh, one of our customers is online and that I actually know who it is because a lot of times the screen name doesn't match the real person's name, obviously. Uh, do you import to Germany? Uh, export to Germany, yes. Uh, hype to start with Cool Derek, thank you. I actually missed all of the Cool Derek comments. Mike told me afterwards and I was sitting there in the praises of all of these people telling me how cool I am. Mine English night night good don't don't know German sorry uh, and my Japanese is not good either so don't ask me to speak Japanese here we go in search of a dream FD oh I would love to have a dream FD we actually got one of the best ones ever recently you can see in some of our like in the background of some of the videos or, like there's a red one it is the best FD that we ever got uh, just hoping to have a great day love your content good morning from Hong Kong good morning that's very cool uh, Kevin Bacchia says, I'm great. That's good to hear. Kevin, hello, hola. I want to see some FC San S or FC 3S. I actually don't know how to say that because in a lot of the uh, engine codes in Japanese, you say the Japanese letter or number, number, and then sometimes you just say it in English. So I don't really know how you're supposed to say that. I usually say FC San S, but then non-Japanese people don't understand. Hello from Calgary, Canada, my home country. I love my Aristo. Thanks, Derek. Who is that? Caucasian, Caucasian tube. Caucasian tube. That's racist. <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello from Montreal, Canada. Okay, so we're going to start up here. Um, this is a auction picks video or question Q and A. So you can ask me anything about buying cars from Japan if you're into that. Uh, how many viewers do we have right now, Mike? We have 36. Okay, and um, so if you want, you can go to auction.pacificcoastjdm.com and you can check the live auctions of what's available in Japan right now at auction and it's really easy I'll just show you a once around here I'm gonna look for a, a 180SX and just search you can put in like a year criteria transmission anything that you want and then uh, when you want me to take a look at something like ooh, this is actually really cool I'll talk about this in a sec then uh, you can put the link into the chat or you can tell me the auction name and auction number but also tell us what car it is Mike here uh, I got Mike on the side here he's gonna be tracking your guys' requests and your guys' questions Mike say what's up what's up how you doing Mike pretty good you want to come onto the camera so people can see your face I'm do it shady be <laughs> be before we started the live Where stream um, is it here? It's right here. There's Mike. Mike said that he's going to do rump shaking action. No, I did not say that. <laughs> that is a lie. He actually did. He says, I'm Mike D with the rump shaking action. And uh, like his last name is Dennis. And so he's, he's technically Mike D, which is really cool because then he can be a beastie boy. Uh, he actually didn't know that Mike D was a Beastie Boy name until I told him, so there's yeah. a bit of a generation gap there. But uh, if you want to know the, the rump shake in action, make sure that you post in the chat cool. there, say Mike D, let's see the rump shake in action. And in case oh, in case you don't like Beastie Boys, which I don't blame you, uh, that's that's a line from one of their songs. And it kind of can give you an idea of, of what kind of lyrics that uh, 
um, that they have. Oh, Caucasian too is not racist. He's half Chinese, half Caucasian. Isn't it weird how if you're half Caucasian and then half something else, people will still call you that ethnicity? Like Obama is black, but he is half Caucasian still. Kind of weird. And my daughter, or I mean, all my children are half as well. Mm. And they like when we go back to Canada, they'll be half Japanese. They won't be half white. Kind of weird. Oh yeah, I've never heard someone being called half white. Like, oh, you're half white. No, maybe right. in other places, like maybe if you go to a place that's predominantly one ethnicity. Right. So I guess, here. Well, what are your kids called here, though? Are they th like they're called half. half. Oh, yeah. Half. Like, yeah. The Japanese yeah. word is, is half. Half. Yeah. And so that means that, like, half Japanese and half something else. So you could be half black, half white, half anything, and people will call you hafu, which is to some people, like, um, it's a term that some people don't like because they're like, no, I'm. I'm not half of anything. I'm a whole person, but I don't really get that argument. Uh, okay, so before we... Oh, let's talk about this car here because it's a 180SX and somebody popped on the front end of an S15 and I like it. Are you looking at it? Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, very cool. And I like the color. The color is kind of like Transformers gray plastic from the 1980s and uh, that makes me happy. And 180s are awesome cars. Other than all of them have dashboard cracks like this one here. And so, this is the basis of it. We are going to translate these auction sheets for you to give you a better idea of what kind of information is on the auction inspection sheets. So this one here is a 96, not importable to the USA. Auction rate RA means a small accident. Original silver, but the seller doesn't say it's color change. That's kind of weird, because that is not the original color, I believe. Or maybe it is. The back looks original, but the front, like the right. You see the front doors and everything looks really weird. Yeah. And the skirts. For sure, Mike D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so mileage is unknown. See the little star here. 108, 600 kilometers. Uh, Mobile steering wheel, extra gauges, aero parts on it. I quite like the aero parts on it. I think like a crazy bumper like this will suit a car that is as crazy as this. Not something I want myself, but all the power to you. Uh, strength and clutch on it. Five-speed manual transmission is a swap. What's a non sooty I don't know. I don't know what a non sooty is. S15 Sylvia front end. Adjustable suspension. Aftermarket wheels. Aftermarket hood. Aftermarket air filter. Aftermarket rear spoiler. And left front pillar has damage from the accident. Yikes! Exterior paint fade and peeling. Maybe that's why it doesn't look like the original silver to me. We're on a fairly busy road, so you can hear the ambulance outside. Modified exhaust and uh, fenders are modified because you would need obviously different fenders in order to fit this front end on it because you have different places where everything lines up. Core support has accident damage as well that has been repaired. Underside surface rust and uh, dashboard cracked. Now, because it's not US legal, it's going to sell for a little bit less, but because it has an S15 front end on it, it's going to sell for a little bit more. And so, $850,000 yen to 950 somewhere in there is my, my price guess. And so that's like $8,000 to $9,000 or so. Not bad. Uh, mileage is unknown though, maybe a little bit less than that. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, one of the rules, don't send in USS auctions because of copyright. We're not allowed to show them on the YouTubes. And so uh, remember that. And next, we are going to go through questions from last week quickly that we can get to. So fire away. This is going to be like speed round. What do you got for me, Mike? There weren't many that we didn't get to. Mike D with the rump shake connection. Do we, we talk about S14s to the USA last time? I think we did. They are, uh, S14s to the USA are legal now, but just barely, and so they seem to be a little bit expensive, but people in the US don't seem to like the S14 as much as the S13 or the S15. And so it's not an awful lot more expensive. Um, what else you got for me? Cappuccino pricing for the USA. Cappuccino pricing is hard to nail down because most of them are in terrible condition, so a lot of them are going to sell for a really cheap price. Cappuccino, in case you don't know, is the small open top. Cappuccino Suzuki. Looks like this. And they're super tiny. And we have one up for sale right now. The one that we have is a little bit more expensive than most of them because it's actually in good condition, unlike most of them. That actually looks good. It looks like the Fair Lady Orange. 
cool. Oh, yes. The more modified these are, the uh -huh. better. I like them. Yes. Make them look like mini vipers. <laughs> mini viper? Yeah. Remember that one that we saw? Let's see if we can find that. Ah, oh, look at this. How cool is that? Yeah. It's a super from uh, Fast and Furious, but it has been built off of a cappuccino. <laughs> that looks bad. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It the, looks awesome. The, the side and the front look great, but the back, I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I am 100% behind that car. Uh, and this one. I, there we go. There's the Viper. Yeah. Yeah. They're all cool. All yeah. cappuccinos are cool. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, price wise, uh, landed price, you can get them between about five uh, US dollars, 5,000 to 10,000, um, somewhere around there. Uh, based on the condition, I would recommend that you go for one in the 8,000 to 9,000 yen range because it's right in the middle. Actually, Mike, can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you take my water bottle there and can you refill it? Sure. With filtered water, please. Yes, sir. And with gin? Oh. We don't have any gin. Not anymore. Not after it's all been drank by Mike. As soon as Mike started working here, he's been drinking on the job. Mostly water. Okay, so uh, I don't have Mike here. I feel all alone, sitting by myself here at the computer. So I'm gonna go through some of your uh, some of your comments quickly here. Uh, I have to scroll back up to see some of them. So pardon me. Uh, I'm a hiring a company here in Sweden to import me a nice Aristo. My budget is around twelve thousand U.S. dollars. What's your thought on getting a nice low mileage car? Can be modded, but tasteful mods. I don't know what the import costs are to Sweden, and so I don't know exactly if that's a, a good deal or not. But usually import companies will charge you more money for basically the same or similar jobs as we do, but because we buy the cars ourselves, instead of paying another company to buy them, generally speaking will be less expensive. And if you're comfortable importing the cars yourself, then you can save money. If you haven't done it before, usually an import company might be a little bit better to go to because they'll be they'll have better answers for you, like exactly how much it costs to import to your country and some of the country-specific registration problems. We're really good with that with Canada, U.S., and some other countries, but like some of the smaller countries, then we don't know all of the details for. Is the Evo 3 rare to find these days? You betcha. Evo 1, 2, and 3 are all super rare. Any GC8s? Uh, there are tons of them in Japan, right. all over the place. Um, and now Mike's back. Everyone say welcome back to Mike. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you got any more questions on that list? Yeah, there's actually um, a couple of people asking about California and Hawaii. One person no. about Hawaii, importing there. Uh -huh. So I thought it was important to okay. curb their expectations. C curb maybe. your expectations? You make it sound maybe. so negative. Well... <laughs> Okay, if you live in Hawaii, you can't buy a car from Japan because the people in Hawaii are like, no, no JDM cars. It's funny because Hawaii is a very great state in the USA. They're very different from most of the other states, obviously. But it is very weird that they have the worst import rules next to California. California, same thing. You can actually, in California, you can import the car. You just can't register it without putting it through an awful lot of compliance. And at the end of that, you may not be able to comply the car anyway. Um, plus, you kind of have to buy from an importer if you're in California too, because the importers are going to get pri a priority with the company that does the registrations over somebody who's an individual like yourself. And so that means you could be waiting like a year or a year and a half or two years before you can register your car because the slots are all being filled up by people who actually know what they're doing. So it's kind of one of those things where doing it as an individual doesn't really make sense. You really want to hire a company to do that for you. That's my take on it at least. We don't, uh, I don't think any of our cars are really California legal except for before they started clamping down on that. Some people were getting their cars through. Okay, so why don't we take a look at some of the cars at the auction. Mike, do you have anything for me that is fun and interesting? I do. Both. 27013 from JAA. You're going to love it. Oh. That's interesting. This is a 2003. The front end of the 2003 doesn't look like this until like 2006, I think, or somewhere in there. So this is uh, a... <laughs> Love the bumper delete on the back. Yeah. 
This is a Renault Clio, or Renault Lutetia, depending on the uh, which market that you're in. But instead of being the regular uh, economy car version of it, they take the engine out of here, and they throw it in the garbage, and then they take a, a new 3-liter engine, and then they put it into here, into the back, which is a homage, an homage? How do you say that word? Is it a silent age? Pays homage. No, is it homage or I, homage? I say it homage. How do you say H? H. So you're an H person. Australia's H. And in the UK, they say H. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Or at least some people that I've met from the UK said H. Hi. Homage. Hi. H. Hi. I don't know. It's an homage to their Renault 5 of yesteryear Group B rally car, which I'll show you a picture of because it's awesome. So the Renault 5 Turbo was a economy car that they took the engine out of and then put a 1.4 liter turbocharged engine in the back and then they went rally racing in it and they're super expensive and awesome now they're like 5 million yen easily at auction and we've sold I think four of them now which is funny because Japan never got them only enthusiasts in Japan imported them because a lot of people in Japan have a lot of money but they're worth a lot now so Renault made a, a new version of it because Renault was funny and they're like hey wouldn't it be cool if we made another version of this and then probably not profit on it at all and all of the people in the board were like yep we love it let's let's make this car and, uh, and I'm glad that they did because it's a pretty sweet car uh, usually it has a different looking front end with kind of droopier eyes these are like angry eyes So it's called a Clio Sport V6. Do, 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 do. Oh, I could be wrong about that. This could be the first year of the angry eyes. Arr, I'm angry. But this is the one that I thought that it would look like. Ah, 2001 and 2003. Okay. So possibly there was no front end swap. Very cool. That means you could import these into Canada with the angry eyes. I, I actually prefer the looks of this one to the looks of this one. What one do you like better? The one at auction? I like... Do you I like, like angry eyes or droopy eyes? Angry eyes. Okay, so Mike's an angry eye kind of person. It kind of <laughs> shows his personality there. <laughs> <laughs> that looks... Yeah, I don't like that as much as the other two. And this one's been modified with with yeah. eyelids and, um, yeah. and then canards. And, uh, is that the original bumper? I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it. And different grill and, and stuff but uh, stock is the extra wide over fenders front and rear and the door actually has an extra piece in it too to widen it extra two pieces uh, they're cool cars they sound amazing they're not super fast but apparently they're fun to drive I've never driven one despite the fact that we've we've exported a few of these now five or six of them maybe yeah prices have gone up a lot recently still love the bumper delete I think that's super funny because that's the original exhaust it's like let's let's show off the original exhaust of the car by taking off the bumper let's see what the original bumper looks like I quite like the way that they look in the back here because they have the exhaust sticking out here I think that's a really good look and yeah they sound awesome vroom, vroom. Uh, auction sheet. These are original wheels. Okay, so October. This may be one of the first ones. Let's find the production number. Uh, that doesn't tell me anything. Okay, low mileage there with 40,000. This is the late model version. I believe the cars are pretty similar between the early model and the late model other than the looks. This one was imported into Japan. It's not an original Japanese car. And why, why can't all the countries have the ability to import any car that you want because to me that makes an awful lot more sense you can tax them if you want but allow any car to be imported this coming from countries like the USA where you have to wait until the car is 25 years old to curb competition but what if you're an enthusiast and you really want this special car that you can't import but now you have to wait 25 years I'm sure there would be a lot of people who would import the R34 GTRs right now into the States at a ridiculously high price because they're enthusiasts and they want to buy that car <clears throat> but nope, have to wait 25 years. And I don't even think the import rules in Japan are that, like, the, the import duty is that expensive. I think it's actually pretty reasonable, because a lot of cars get imported here. Original 18-inch wheels, mobile steering wheel, 40,000 kilometers, original rear bumper comes with the car. It's inside. 
Okay, it comes with the original country's owner's manual. AC doesn't work, seat side is saggy, and steering wheel wear. Uh, slightly dirty, cigarette burn inside, because everyone in Japan loves their cigarettes. Actually, I was looking at smoking rates, because I've thought all my life that smoking in Canada is is uh, like 8 to 10% or so. Because, like, I was at auction yesterday. I was at the port shooting some cars. I went into the auction, and I, I, I sat down on the toilet. Um, to do what you do when you sit down in the toilet. And I looked in front of me, and there's a big sign right on the wall in front of me that says no smoking. And I was in there for a few seconds, and somebody else came in and then lit up a cigarette. And I'm guessing that his stall also had a no smoking sign on it. And I'm thinking, how... Like, it, it takes you 30 seconds to walk to the smoking area. Why do you need to smoke it here? And obviously that sign is needed because people are, are still doing it. And so it frustrated me that people smoke so much in Japan. So I wanted to take a look at how much people smoke in other countries. And in Canada, it's it's actually around 20%, which is higher than I thought. I'd say Japan is probably higher than that, maybe 40%. Yeah. I don't know. It seems smokers are everywhere here. And it really bothers me because I hate the smell. And my mom was a smoker growing up. And I, I had really terrible asthma growing up and actually had to live in the hospital for a while because it just wouldn't go away and it was like critical level asthma. And the doctor's like, well, you wouldn't have had asthma if your mom didn't smoke while you were in her stomach. And I'm like, oh, people who smoke are just like, I don't want to use the R word, but I want to find a word that's stronger than stupid. Like why, and then I'm thinking like, so marijuana is now legal in Canada. You can go to the store and you can buy it. and. I can understand marijuana even though I don't want to smoke it myself because it gives you something that you don't get from cigarettes. Cigarettes make you angry and stinky, and that's basically it. Marijuana at least will get you high in the same way that drinking alcohol would get you drunk. Um, I can understand smoking marijuana. So I looked at the, at the smoking rates in Canada for marijuana, and this is at the time of legalization. It may change now that it's legal because it only happened two weeks ago, but people in uh, in Canada, Canada, before it was legal, smoked 15% of people across Canada smoked, and in my area it was 20%. And in my area, actually, people who smoked marijuana was higher than people who smoked cigarettes. And so, I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going, through, going to with this, but... How about New Zealand? People smoke weed there? Uh, but it's not legal, but yeah. Do you get in trouble if you do it? Yeah. How much trouble do you get in? Well, it's like, like criminal, it's criminal charge, but I mean like if you were found with maybe like a personal amount, then... Uh, have you ever been found with a personal amount, Mike? I have, I have not, that's why I don't know what the consequences are. But it, I don't imagine it would be very good for you. <laughs> Yeah. In the States, you can be found with it on you three times and go to jail. I did hear that, like, I've never smoked before, but from what I heard, smoking cigarettes is like a stress relief as well. Like, but, it makes you more calm. Right, but isn't it only a stress relief because the nicotine makes you feel stressed? Like, the first time that you smoke it, people oh. aren't like, oh, my stress is all gone. Ah. But it's people who regularly right, smoke, they're like, right. I, I need a cigarette. And so, and, and then they smoke it, and they're like, oh, thank goodness I got my cigarette. If you never smoked before, you probably wouldn't need that. You probably wouldn't feel that stress relief. Because I've, I've witnessed people smoke for the first time, and they didn't look like they were extra relaxed afterwards. Mm. They just I, coughed I and coughed and coughed, that, yeah. and then they're like, I'm never doing that again, but then they do. Anyways, uh, yeah, Renault Clio's kind of went on a tangent there, but the Renault Clio's are... 1.5 to 4 million depending on the condition this one starts at 3 million which is an awful lot for one that has modifications to it because like most other cars in this category you're going to find that the prices are up for original condition ones and modifications make it go down in price that's pretty common on euro cars but especially higher performance euro cars like non-original seats the original seats in this are pretty lame i think and the seating position is lame as well but I don't think that the aftermarket seats give any benefit to the car. And so I'm a little bit surprised that it starts at 3 million. I wouldn't be surprised if nobody really wants it. It might sell for just above 3 million. It's kind of weird that they picked that as a starting price. Why not have 3 million as the reserve price and have the start price like 700,000 yen or something? Actually, rate 4.5. But the mileage is low. I don't know. We'll see. 
Kevin Machida, you want to show another Clio V6? I'm tired of talking about Clio V6s. I want to talk about cigarettes and weed. <laughs> Somebody's like, AE86, do you want to see one? Uh, go to auction.pacificcoastjdm.com and then find one, and then you can display it to us, and then we'll talk about it. When you say dollars, you mean U.S. dollars or Canadian dollars? Uh, I'm always talking U.S. dollars because most people around the world know what U.S. dollars are, and even though I'm from Canada, U.S. dollars are... are much more well known than Canadian dollars or New Zealand dollars or Australian dollars. Would you like another car? Sure, we'll do another car and then we'll go for a question. You have a choice between a Porsche and FC3S. Wait, wait, wait. What Porsche? Uh, 944. 944? I don't like them very much. Okay. Or I a Wait. I do like them, but all the ones that we see are in pretty bad condition, and it makes me sad. Okay, try this one then. Number 375 from TAA Kinky. Okay, I need to uh, blow my nose because I'm sick, and you can hear my nasally uh, emo voice right now, and so I want to do that, but I don't want to do it on video. Mike, do you want to come uh, shake your booty? Uh, no. <laughs> Wait, you want to have the rump shake in action? <laughs> Which one are we looking at here? Uh, TAA Kinky. Yeah, that one. Okay. Pardon me. Mike, you're up. I'm up. Oh. I'm here. You can probably hear me. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Derek is gonna love these. <laughs> can you see it from there? I see you. I'm like four meters away. Oh. Well, you're gonna love it when you get here. Get this ready. Well, I don't know. Now that I see it on the big screen, maybe. Oh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> yep. Uh, I need some hand sanitizer now. Do we have any? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, we, don't, we don't use my computer for doing this. We have like a, a, a video editing computer made for video editing. And uh, it's the one that we used to use when Andrew used to work here, but he no longer works here. Uh, and so if I get ba all my sickness bacteria on everything, then uh, it'll just stay there and fester until I come back next week and then I'll continue to be sick. Okay, so we got a Fair Lady Z, the 280ZX, the one that everyone really doesn't like. Yeah. That's interesting. Looks like a lot of damage to it. Exterior has various corrosion holes. Ooh, that's the car I want. A fair lady that nobody likes with corrosion holes on the exterior and color change so that nobody can ever repair those corrosion holes without getting the color wrong. Underside corrosion, various corrosion, exterior various corrosion. Rear hatch damper doesn't work. Console has a piece missing. Engine around the engine has been modified. Stereo doesn't work. Fender mirrors on this car. That's kind of cool. Let's take a look at the front. So this car reminds me a lot of kind of like the 80s and because I was born in 1982 my vision of the 80s is a child's vision of the 80s and so as I get older I'm starting to realize that the 80s weren't as cool as I thought that they were but when I was a kid cars that looked like this and Transformers and He-Man and all that kind of thing like hair metal it was all really really cool and so I would have thought this was a cool car. I can understand why people don't like it because the previous Fair Lady was a very, very good looking car and then this one took away a lot of its beautiful lines, but if that first car never came out, this would still be a cool looking car. So in that respect, it's good. And as it gets older, it's starting to age a little bit nicer. They're much, much cheaper than the S30 Fair Ladies. Um, yeah, not much else to say about that. The interior is kind of cool. I like them. No picture. Too bad. Okay, it uh, 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 doesn't look like it's in that good of shape. Um, terrible shape. Uh, I don't know about terrible. It's uh, 1983, so 1983 cars are usually in pretty poor condition. Comparatively, it doesn't seem right. that bad. Huh. Uh, I'd say maybe 700,000 yen. It's not a car that I would, I would particularly like. It has a 2-liter engine. I wonder which engine that is. I don't know. That's funny, a carbon hood. See, carbon hood on a car like this doesn't work for me because carbon hoods didn't exist when this car came out on anything except for a race car. And when they were on race cars, they were painted so you couldn't even see the uh, 
the material that they were using. It wasn't until like the late 80s, early 90s where carbon fiber hoods became a thing. And so to me it feels a little bit weird putting a newer style of modification on an older car. Not necessarily bad, just a little bit weird to me. And uh, yeah, these back things, they were on so many cars when I was a kid, I used to think they were so cool. To me they just look a little bit inconvenient now. Still cool from the outside, but from the inside might be a little bit inconvenient. Yep. Okay, I'm going to give up on seeing that one. I want to answer a question. Somebody give me a question. Japanese version of Dukes of Hazard. Uh, this isn't a Ken Berry, right? No, Ken Berry's a Skyline, made by the same company, obviously. And I, I guess kind of similar looks because, you know, it's the same era, sports car from the same company. Uh, you wouldn't want to confuse one for the other, though. The Kenberry, if you look at them side by side, is a very different looking car. Which one's the Kenberry? C110? There we go. So, there you go. You can see much more muscular. It's kind of weird that this, like, if you look at this car, mm. and then you look at this car, this is the one that your eyes are going to gravitate to, because that was a very muscular looking car for a Japanese car, and then this one's kind of like... The word I would use to describe this car is one that I don't want to say on YouTube because I don't want to get uh, taken off of YouTube. Have you boofed lately? Um, nope. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. The, no, all right, you can explain later. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it, it has to do with U.S. politics. So people around right. the world typically wouldn't understand what that means unless they're from the U.S. and then probably at least 70% of people from the U.S. knows what that reference is. Okay. Do you ever see Mitsubishi Cyborg come through? I think somebody asked this last week and I said the answer was no. They're super rare. Like, it auction twice a year or so, so you're really going to want to buy one from a dealer because auction, you'll have to be waiting forever. What's the weather like in Japan? It's uh, slightly rainy and about 17 degrees Celsius or so. I'm sorry, I don't know Fahrenheit. Toyota Celica. I cannot do it. It's USS. USS? Sorry, buddy. Mary Ken. Mary Ken. Okay. It's a big GT car. Derek, do you have a US Customs broker you can refer someone to? Yes, we do. So if you buy, we'll set you up with them unless you want your own customs broker. Stagia Autec. Kevin Machida got one. I haven't looked, but I'm willing to get one. I'm about an hour and a half southeast of Derek, and it's been raining steadily all morning. I actually was out at the lot, not at the lot, at the port <laughs> yesterday, and I was shooting reports, and it looked like it was just going to come down. Like, you could see in the distance, the rain was just, like, pouring rain, and I had to shoot 10 car reports, which is a lot of work. I was basically there all day. And uh, I saw it coming closer and coming closer, and then it just it downpoured for like one minute and then stopped for the rest of the day. It was really weird. We use the metric system here, so no worries. Yeah, it, it's so weird that, that the U.S. uses the, the Fahrenheit and the imperial measurements. They don't make any sense at all to anyone else around the world, but nobody wants to change them. No preludes at auction? They're really rare cars here in Japan. The prelude is a car that was engineered to be competitive in the American market, not the Japanese one. Derek, have you sold the FC yet? No, I don't really have time. We've been really busy. I'm, I'm glad that we have a chance to do this video, but this is really difficult for us to work around with the other work that we have just to get this in. Tell me back in an Evo 6.5. Love the car. Uh, everybody loves that car. That's why they're so darn expensive. The, the um, 4 million yen sometimes for a really good one. I live in Nova Scotia I would love and love what you do keep up the awesome videos it must be pretty late in Nova Scotia I imagine time for bed it must be cold over there too now I love my G-Wagon but now I want to get a Pajero Evolution oh Ooh, that's cool it's a weird one to go from a G-Wagon to a Pajero Evo in case you don't know what the Pajero Evo is it's like a Lancer Evo but it's a Pajero they are really cool, but, well, cheaper than a G-Class, that's for sure, but they only come in two doors, and they only come with a gasoline engine, and they're really not fast, even though they look like they are. It's a 3.5 liter, I think 250 horsepower or something like that. So regular, uh, that's a Pajero IO, but the regular Pajero looks like this, 
and you can get them in two doors as well, so shortened wheelbase. And then the Evo is like, I'm angry. Look at me, I've got devil horns. Look at the back. It actually has devil horns on the back. It's not a full spoiler, it's just two little knobby things. I've seen those in real life. I didn't notice the little devil horns. I'll show cool. you the rear. Show it's cool, isn't it? Show us the rump shaking action. I'm okay. angry. Oh, it's kind of like Show us the rump shaking action. I, I'm afraid if I type that into Google here, we're going to find things that aren't suitable. <laughs> Yeah, Pajero Evos are cool. Price-wise, uh, they've become quite rare recently. They used to be around 1 million to 1.5 million. I think the price has probably gone up more as the uh, as the availability of them has gone down. Mitsubishi's tend to rust faster than other um, cars, and I think these were made from like 2001 or something, or maybe 2000. And then uh, Mitsubishi's from that era, a lot of them are pretty rusty. Oh, I know it's a toy, but that looks so awesome. I want one big top. Ooh, lifted? That would actually be really cool. I don't think it's that easy to lift, though. No. I think, because, like, the suspension on this is, like, car suspension. It's not, like, yeah. a traditional body on frame. So no body lifts, and everything has to be suspension, and then it runs independent suspension, and so you get very limited amount of travel in your front. Very cool, though. Cool looking. Probably not that good to own, I think. Okay, uh, we're at 11.36, we're going to run for another 25 minutes here, so go feel free to browse around the auction, they don't have to look at my ugly mug while you're watching the video. There I am. Oh, I wanted to mention last week about the hair thing, and I want to know what you guys think. Um, we got a ton of comments on a video the other day, like seven comments, and they all said, Derek has 2000s hairstyle. And it's true, this is the exact same hairstyle I had when I was in high school. Uh, or from grade 10, actually, which was 1998. And I, I actually haven't changed anything because I don't really know. Like, when I... I always go like this. Like, every time I'm about to get a haircut, I go to Google Images, and I go uh, 2018 uh, men's hair, right? And then all the hair that I see on here looks really stupid to me. Like, it doesn't look, it, it looks way too fashionable. Like, if I did something like this, I don't think I'd be able to leave my house. Is this, is this really what guys do? This one's really popular. The longer hair on the top, and then, like, a fake line here that, that people shave. And then you have to get your hair cut every week in order to keep something like that. And then, like, my head is also really skinny. So if I did something like this, it would accentuate the skittiness of my head. It would look very oblong. I think it looks weird on this guy, but he's super handsome, so he can pull it up. When people see this person, they're going to be seeing his handsome face and think, if you shaved, you would be more handsome, but I'm down with you. That doesn't really work the same with me. And I don't have the piercing eyes for this guy. So I'm wondering what I should do, because do I just have this hairstyle forever? I'm 36 now. I'm not a... I'm not, and, and this isn't the era of Backstreet Boys, so does this work for me, or is it something that people actually notice? You're mature enough not to be worrying about hairstyle. Does your wife like it? See, my wife cuts my hair. She loves this hairstyle. She, uh, maybe it's because it makes me look young. I don't know. She loves it, and so that's what I go with. But I'm, won I'm wondering, though, how much longer? Because I can't be 60 years old and have hair like this. I was mentioning this to Mike By the, the other day. What? Well, See how long you can get away with it before people are like, hey, what's the deal, buddy? People are already asking, what's the deal, buddy? <laughs> what, what's that guy? His name is Guy something F. Guy, guy Fieri. See, this guy is too old to have this hairstyle, right? Oh, yeah. This is who I was talking to you about the other but day. But that's cool. You shouldn't change it. And once you get to a certain age, it becomes cool again. Like... But somebody somebody who's in their 30s and goes around partying all the time, Right. there's something wrong with that person. But if you're like 17 and you party all the time, there's no problem with that, right? Uh, I mean... Generally speaking, yeah, I, I see what you mean. But when you're 70 and you're partying all the time, it becomes a cool thing again. Like, wow, right. he can... Yeah. Like the Rolling Stones thing, right? Like, wow, I'm impressed. This is what I need. Well, maybe I, That's maybe, his whole image, though. <laughs> I saw the funniest thing. I saw a picture of, uh, of Donald Trump if you were bald.
see if I can. Oh, this one. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Actually, I didn't believe how old he was. Isn't he eighty something? I don't think so. I think he's in his seventies. Oh. Like seventy nine or something. Oh. Seventy eight, seventy nine. I don't know. But yeah, with the way that he currently looks, makes him look goofy. But it also doesn't show his age. So if you give him crazy, like regular hair for somebody his age. He would look a lot worse, in which case I think he would get even less respect than he currently gets. I don't know. Let's not make this a political show. So, <coughs> if you still want to talk about news, um, someone's asking, have you heard about Canada trying to ban right-hand drive cars? I, Canada's not trying to ban right-hand drive cars. There are a lot of rumors that go around like that, but it would be very difficult for Canada to do that. I think in, a, in other countries that wouldn't be the case, but I don't think Canada is going to ban them. It would be very difficult for them to do that because if Canada were to make a, a change like that, there would have to be some reason. And we've already been through stages of fear-mongering about that, and it didn't fly. And any studies that have been done have been in the favor of 25 or 15 year old cars being able to be imported. Um, they've tried to argue this on, on terms of safety, but Japanese cars are just as safe as non Japanese cars. And then they also tried to do it in terms of insurance claims, saying that Japanese cars have more claims than equivalent aged cars, which is true. But the reason for that is because, like, a 15 year old car in Canada is a rather old car. But a 15-year-old car that an enthusiast imports themselves because they think it's a really sweet car is a different grade of car and likelier that an enthusiast car has a higher chance of claims against it for insurance than a car that's not worth very much. Like if you were to import this car here, it might be $15,000 to import, but another 1983 car in Canada might only be worth $100. So of course the more valuable car and the person who values their car more is going to have a higher instance of insurance claims. And so it's, you know, there are people who don't want these cars to be importable, but I've been doing this for a long time and I've seen no solid evidence that that's ever going to change. Um, if the question was, is it, if the 15 years going, 15 year rule is going to go away, I would say the same thing. I don't think so. I think we're going to stay like this for the time being. Somebody is trying to tempt me with the R32 Golf Mark IV. Kevin, you know my soft spot, but I'm not going to fall for it. I am off the drugs completely as of now. It's been three three months since I've driven by R32. More questions? Yeah. 72 years old, somebody says, probably referring to Trump. Mm. But yeah, for somebody 72, it's amazing how much energy that he has. Yeah, how? Even well, if I misdirected. <laughs> huh? That's just to end how little he knows. It's it's weird it's weird being outside of the U.S. and seeing people in the U.S. consider their president compared to how the rest of the world sees it because you know I, I work with people all around the world and he's not very popular in other countries no, nor is he in the U.S.A. but it depends on, on uh, where you get your news from I guess any S15s for auction why don't we why don't we take a look and see what we can find do 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 advanced search Nissan. Sylvia. Oh, there it is. And then that was 1999 was the first year for those. Search. So there are 14 of them at the moment. And why don't we query here for only the six speeds? Because the six speed has the turbo. So we got one, two, three, four, four, five. Five with turbos that are up right now. Right now is not a particularly busy time at auction. Usually the busier times is Thursday through the, through to Saturday. And which one do we like? This one here looks similar to the last one that we looked at, which was only an S13. KMAA. Well, I'm not done with the wheels and I'm not done with the body kit. So I would not buy this car. I like how the body kit is trying to go for aggressive, but I don't think that the people who designed this have ever designed anything in their life. I don't think that, like, that's not real. It looks like a spoon. It looks like a... I, I don't know. It looks know. like you could eat something with that. It looks like... 
like a video game company who has never made a video game before and wants to make a video game for the first time designed that body kit. They're like, I know how to 3D model. I think that this body kit will look cool and aggressive. And uh, that's your bid, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike's going away to bid on a car right now. So, Mike, if you win that one, you have to say, I win! I win! Like they do in like the board game commercials. They always have the boy at the end, I win! And then everyone else in the family is like, oh, you got me. As if that's how it really happens in a board game. <laughs> Right? In, in real life, it's like the boy's like, I win! And then, every, then somebody flips over the board game and says, I'm not playing anymore! <laughs> you cheated! I know you did! You always win! Ooh, an 850R! Good pick on that one, Gorms. Okay, 2059. Let's have a look at that. Oh, I can't find it! Oh, because I'm looking for Sylvia's. Okay, 850. Where are you? There it is. The 850 is the first fast car that I ever drove. And I know it doesn't look like a fast car, but it is. And it's cool. So it's a uh, front wheel drive, 2. Point something, 2.2 liter or 2.3 liter? 2.3 liter. Turbocharged, inline five cylinder. Which is really weird because the engine goes this way but it's five cylinders, so it's fairly long for being a, a front-wheel drive layout engine. Then turbo, very cool. And quite a bit of power. Not too much power, but quite a bit. Sadly, only available in automatic transmission as far as I know. I don't think they made the 850R in uh, a five-speed. Uh, this one's in really rough shape. Look at the body, all those marks. Like A3 is a super big scratch, so there, there. AU2 is a pretty big visible dent repainted sections. AU3 is a very large dent in the scratch. Like uh, somebody bumped a wall or something. We win! Woo! Win. What did we win? Uh, Master G. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that was a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's always a concern when we have customers that take a very long time to purchase because it takes away from all the other customers that we want to sell cars to. Uh, yeah, 850R. Very cool. And these are the original wheels for it. There are two different sets of wheels you could get, actually. There were 16s and 17s, and I think these are the 16s. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about. Uh, the shift lock doesn't work. Kind of weird. ABS lamp is on. Moldings are cracked. Rear gate damper doesn't work. Headliner is saggy, large. And oil leak. A lot of headliners, especially on Euro cars, go saggy, and I think it has to do with the humidity here in Japan compared to other countries. I think that they engineer the headliners to work properly, but then the humidity breaks down the glue and then they get saggy. It happens on BMWs a lot, Volkswagens and Audis a lot, and I don't think Mercedes. And that it does on a lot of the smaller Euro brands too, like Volvo. Okay, price-wise, I think they're still pretty cheap, like 200,000 yen, and they're a little bit different. I like Volvo very much. Even now, they make very good cars. Leather seats. Oh, oh, right-hand drive. That's that's going to lower the value of it. Left-hand drive is going to be worth more. This could be worth almost nothing. Yeah, I don't. I, I think you could buy this car for like 200 bucks if you wanted. Huh. Range Rovers are terrible for roof sag. Yeah, every Defender ever made basically comes out of the factory with roof sag. We, we buy them like crazy, and everyone does. Every single one. The diesel of that area era was vag. <laughs> Volkswagen AG. Hey, Derek, what's the price range of, of an FD RX-7 in Japan? Here in Australia, there's a massive price range, and nice ones are getting extremely expensive. It's the same deal with the RX-7s because there's a big difference between nice ones and bad ones because for a long time, they were cheap cars. Because they were cheap cars, people bought them that didn't take care of the cars as well as they should have. And so because of that, you get ones that were taken care of well and then a whole bunch that weren't taken care of well. And so, big price range. Here in Japan, your prices go from about 300,000 yen on the small side, and this is for non-US importable ones because the price goes up big time for those. And then up to about 3 million yen for 
for really nice ones. So that's about 20, 25,000 US dollars for the top range and the bottom range. If you're importing to the USA, the bottom is around $6,000 $6, or so. But then non-USD ones are like uh, 4,000, 3,000, somewhere in there. Ooh, I bought one, I can answer. Mileage is a huge factor. Yeah, unknown mileage really crashes the price, but like you can get low mileage RX-7s that are in bad shape because <clears throat> even some owners in this day and age don't realize that like an RX-7 runs on gasoline and oil. So it actually uses your gasoline and your oil in order to run, unlike a regular car, which between oil changes shouldn't have the oil go down. So with the RX-7, if you do oil changes every 5,000 kilometers or every uh, six months, generally speaking, you're going to be okay. But if your compression is low, um, or maybe it's not so much compression, but if you go a lo like longer than six months, your oil level goes down, or if you have leaks in it, there's a high chance you're going to damage the engine really quickly. So we've bought some that are like 50,000 kilometers and still have compression problems with their engine. And you can tell too, because when you start the engine of an RX-7 that has compression problems, it's... And when you start driving it, it's still really fun to drive because the compression problems aren't a huge factor when, you're, when your rotor's spinning quicker. But um, when it's idling and it's, it's sounding like that, it's, it's a big turnoff to a lot of people. And having a smoother engine with higher compression feels better when you drive too. Uh, Maserati 3200 GT, 70% of the ones that we buy of those have some problem and they're expensive to fix. I don't recommend those at all. They're, they're one of the warning cars. We have a handful of cars that people are like, oh, you want a Maserati 3200 GT? Okay, wait a second, sit down and we're going to have a conversation <laughs> about your life choices that made you come to wanting one of these cars. Uh, Elon, Elton, I'm sorry, Elton, hey, hey Elton, what are you doing? Have you sold your house yet? Uh, rotary engine cars are good to buy if you are buying brand new or simply do not like money. Yes. Or if you buy with the intention of rebuilding the engine and then taking care of it because they feel so good to drive. The rotary engine is such an amazing feeling engine when you're driving it. And they got everything right in that car other than the reliability if a, if a weeder is owned that car. Dirk's polite way of saying POS. Uh, I try to be polite in real life. That doesn't happen so much, but on the videos, <laughs> I have to scale it back a bit. Uh, I had to rebuild. Yeah, but that's fine, because when you rebuild, it costs you a certain amount, but the car is still worth, like if you get a bad condition RX-7, the price is really cheap compared to how good that car is, how good it looks and how good it performs and how good it feels. So if you factor in that you, you, you spend more money on it, it's still worth it in my mind. I'm glad to turn on the bell notifications for the channel this week. Ooh, thank you. Bell notifications are pretty rad in my mind. Um, I actually have never recommended that anybody press them because I personally don't use the bells. I would be annoyed big time if those bells went off all the time. And I don't think that my channel is really the type of channel that you can't miss a video at. Um, the only thing is the live streams because some people, we get a number of like um, messages after the fact on these videos that say, hey, when's your next one coming up? Because I don't want to miss it. So, you know, some people like the opportunity to talk with us personally. Would you like to see a cool Samba then yes. with the VW kit? Yes. Number eight at CAA Chubby. It's got cool wheels. Spoiler alert. I can't breathe out of my nose at all. This is very uncomfortable. Oh man, there's so many auctions that uh, share third. the number eight. Yeah, third from the bottom. Okay. Okay. All right, let's uh, not hide this behind my picture. There we go. Okay, so this is a K-Van, like most other K-Vans, except it has a glass roof. The glass roof is actually really cool because this one here tilts up to give you a little opening if you want. But this one here raises up and then goes all the way back. And then gives you a nice airy feeling of the inside. Because Well, the inside of these are generally pretty big and open anyway. Actually, this is a cool steering wheel. This is a perfect picture to show. Windows all the way around, good visibility. The problem with K-Vans is they're, they're dra like dreadfully uncomfortable to drive, in my opinion. They're, they're made as cheap vehicles, and they feel very much like that. The driving position's not good, materials are cheap, suspension is harsh. They're basically industrial vehicles that are meant for storage, hauling, that they made into 
consumer vehicles to meet demand. I think they look really cool, especially with these Volkswagen kits on them. Uh, there are a lot of the ones with the Volkswagen kits that are just not very good at all because they were built like 10 years ago and then have over the years just gone away. A lot of them have been color changed like this one has. And when you color change, you know, color change cars are often the paint isn't done that well compared to original paint. And so, you, you know, it's hit and miss. Sometimes you get good paint, sometimes you get bad paint. I like when they do a really good job like this one with the seats. You can see the seats have uh, seat covers on them. And again, I'm not a huge fan of seat covers, but when they match the interior with colors, and you know, it's cool. It looks like it's a little bit worn in here. A painted dashboard will wear out pretty quickly. Cool steering wheel. And then what do we got here? 1994, so importable to the USA next year. Timing belt has been replaced, comes with sunroof. Uh, unknown mileage, but it shows 133, 413 kilometers on here. Uh, that's weird. Piston ring was replaced at 110,000 kilometers. It's not really the type of engine that you replace piston rings on. You usually toss the engine in the garbage and buy a new one. Electric clutch has been replaced. Hmm. Interesting. Mileage well, unknown. Interior dirty. Headliner is dirty. Interior has been painted. The bed section has scratches. They call the trunk in these beds for vans in Japan. So scratches in there. Full color repaint. Wheel covers have scratches on them. Engine oil leak. Aftermarket steering wheel. And uh, aftermarket front mask. And seat covers on there. Uh, paint damage on the front you can see there, but the body's pretty good. I don't know. It's cool um, These Volkswagen ones tend to sell for a little bit more than the standard ones and They're really easy to find if you're looking for a Volkswagen one You can usually find like three or four a week because it's a very popular conversion for these vans and uh, 200,000 yen 150 to 200,000 yen is gonna be my guess on this Not that much like 800 to 1300 US dollars Ooh, I see a comment from Pacific Coast Auto. That must be Mike. That's, That's what the M means. Look at this, M for Mike. We got three minutes left. What are we going to do for three minutes? Are we going to see you shake your rump, Mike? No, we're not going to see that. Can we make a shirt with a picture of you? Like, I could draw a picture of you shaking your rump. Would yeah, that, that's Would fine. you be okay with that? Yeah, as long as it has those little marks, like shake, shake marks. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right? so it doesn't just look like a picture of you bending over. With shake marks. I don't know if I would be good enough at drawing so that people would know that it's you. Plus, you don't show up on video that often either. That's why I don't want to show up on video shaking my rump. Do you think that you're ever going to be noticed? Like, in public? Probably not. I've been noticed a few times. And in Japan? Been, uh, in, in Japan. I didn't in Canada. But it uh, feels really awkward to me when people are like, Hey, you're Derek. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I'm not really a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Bye! <laughs> yeah. Oh, Elton says, hi, Mike. Oh, cool. He says, uh, I'm going to buy 10 Porsches from you. Not really. Elton just bought 10 Porsches. It's weird. I, don't, I will never in my life have enough money to buy 10 Porsches all at once. Any Honda <laughs> City updates? Yeah, in my last video, uh, I had Honda City update. Um, I believe what we're going to do going forward, and we have to wait until I'm a little bit less busy, is I'm gonna, just going to send it to a shop and have them restore it. Four of the Porsches are sold already, Elton. You're the man. Selling all your Porsches. But not buying them from me. I'm disappointed. Would you like one more car to end? Yeah, let's do one more. How about an Ortex stage? Okay. Uh, sir, uh, 23132 at JAA. How many viewers do we have right now? 46. Oh, we're going down. Yeah, less than last week. Oh. <laughs> Well, the people who like these videos, they really like them. It's a unique type of video on the internet right now. Nobody else is doing these. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> boop, 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 boop. Okay, so in case you didn't know, the Autech Stagia is the running gear and engine from a Skyline R33 GTR. That means you get the same four-wheel drive slash two-wheel drive system 
turbocharged twin turbo 2.6 liter engine and manual transmission and so very cool it's basically just a station wagon version of the GTR which is amazing because the GTR is a very high performing car it's basically at the time it came out it was very close to supercar uh, supercar performance I suppose and then having fringe body with supercar equals a very cool combination and very interesting that Nissan, well Nissan sort of decided to do that. You'll notice that this one says Autech on it. Autech is a tuning branch that is currently owned by Nissan. I think that uh, they may have been owned by Nissan at this time too. And then Autech was like, hey, the stage is based off of the Skylines running here, but you don't make a GTR version of the stage yet. And I think some people would buy that. And it was true, some people did buy them. And they're expensive cars, but if you take into consideration that they cost a lot less than the Skyline GTR, but you get, you know, eight tenths of a Skyline plus a weird looking body. And then it's like, I mean, it's a sleeper. People will see this and they'll just think it's a regular station wagon. And then it's, it's, it's actually quite powerful and able to be tuned to higher horsepower if you want. Some people put R34 front ends on them. This one looks like it's been modified with a front mount intercooler and really nice BBS wheels on it. Uh, seats have been replaced. Oh, yeah, those aren't the original seats. 125,210 kilometers on here. BBS LM, LM wheels. Oh, they are. Okay. I didn't look close enough. I couldn't see the little screws on the inside. BBS LM 18-inch wheels, which I'm convinced look good on every car. I, I don't think I've seen LMs on any car that I didn't like it on. Uh, Brembo calipers. I come stock on these. Recaro SR7 semi bucket seat times two, HKS boost controller, Blitz RVIT type two. I don't know what that is. HKS intercooler piping, HKS cam cover. That's kind of cool. I like it when they do the HKS mm. cam covers because it might mean that that is a full HKS engine, but you never know unless you, you take it apart and see. Aftermarket exhaust, oil catch tank, Stagia Days. Arrow, one part. I guess the front bumper. Oh. Uh, comes with Navi, extra gauges, mobile steering wheel, engine, engine head blue paint. That's cool. Autec version 260 RS. And yeah, it, it's just the 260 RS. That's the Skyline GTR equivalent. Otherwise, you can get them with a 2.5 liter single turbo version of the engine for a lot cheaper. But this one's quite special. Uh, prices one million to these days it's creeping up to two million yen, so eight thousand to eight, uh, seventeen thousand US dollars. This one's been in an accident, front and rear. Um, the starter makes noises when you use it. Hood damper is saggy, core support replaced, left front inner panel dented, floor side member dented, uh, left step has been replaced. That's kind of a big deal for me when they replace the sills down here in an accident. Right rear inner panel dented and steering wheel wear, roof rail paint peeling, kind of a popular thing. Actually, these rails are different. Usually they have the stand-up style rails. This is a conversion by the looks of it. Interesting. I quite like it with the rails on it though. I think it goes with the, the overall package of a station wagon. Looks like body's kind of weak. Paint is bad in a number of places. Windshield rock, uh, windshield cracked paint cracks in the front fender. It's a little bit weak. This one will probably sell for around 1 million yet or so. Still a cool car and it looks good. Like a lot of the damage like this, if it were my car, I'd be like, no, no, I, I want a car without all that damage on it. But then when you drive by, 99% of the people are not going to see it. So there is that. And it can be a project for you if you want, because a car like this is only going to go up in value. Uh, okay, so we're going to end there. If you have questions, we're taking a list, and next week we're going to start off the, the stream at the same time, 11 o'clock Japan time, which is an hour previous to right now, and we're going to answer those questions point form at the very beginning of the next stream, and for now we're going to cut out because we're already four minutes over. So thanks everyone for coming in. Sorry I couldn't answer all the questions, but see you again in one week at the exact same time. So thanks a lot, everybody. Talk to you later literally talk to you later because I'm talking to you right now it's weird stop streaming button where is it here it is